Welcome to the very first devlog of our journey creating a third-person shooter from scratch in Unreal Engine 5 using C++. And today is special because this is the video where I reveal the official name of this project. Yeah! The game we're building is called Ludoria. This name represents a world where everything feels possible, where chaos and creativity meet. The inspiration comes from the crazy world of the Oasis in the novel and movie Ready Player One. And just like the Oasis, Ludoria will be filled with wild and unexpected challenges. That's why I want your help. Comment below with the craziest ideas you'd like to see inside Ludoria. All of them will be considered. Beside commenting, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and ring the bell so you don't miss this wonderful creation with free code detailed in every lesson. If you want to dive deeper, check the description below where I added links to the full tutorials series and also to the individual lessons that cover everything I'm mentioning here. So how do we start the shooter from scratch? By starting at an empty Unreal Engine project and wondering if we made a mistake. Kidding, sort of. In this first step, we set up the shooter framework, uh, created the folder structure, built our first C++ classes, and connected everything to Git for version control. Because let's be honest, at some point, you're going to break something, and Git is like a time machine that lets you pretend it never happened. We also created a demo of a character class and a game mode based class. A bit boring. Yeah, necessarily, absolutely. Think of it like a stretching before running. Not the most exciting part, but skip it and you'll regret it later. Next, we created our own character class in C++ and turned it into a blueprint from scratch. This is where the fun begins, because Unreal's character class already gives us movement, jumping, and control. It's like buying a car and finding out the wheels and engine are already included. Then we built our very first blueprint to bring the player character to life. It is simple, but it's that magical moment where you go, okay, this thing actually exists now. After that, we added a spring arm component, which is basically Unreal's ways of keeping the camera from being stuck inside your character's head. We declared it in C++, made sure it was exposed to the editor, created a greater function to keep things clean and attach it to the character. And of course, we had the classic which header file do I need moment? Don't worry, I saved you the pain. By the end, the camera was following our character nicely. No more horror movie first person shots of staring into the back of your character's eyeballs. Then we had to tackle one of Unreal's most important concepts, controllers. Think of it like this. Your character is the body, but without a brain, it's just standing there. The controller is that brain. The player controller is the part that listens to your keyboard, mouse, or gamepad and tells the body what to do. The AI controller is the evil twin. It takes over NPCs and makes them do all kinds of clever stuff. And here's the kicker. Controllers don't do anything until they possess a pawn. Possession sounds dramatic, but really it's just giving the brain full control over the body. Without this link, nothing moves. So yeah, understanding controllers is like learning how to drive. You don't get very far if you skip this lesson. Once the foundations were solid, it was time to set up movement. We created input actions and an input mapping context. This is where you tell Unreal, hey, when I press W, I expect you to do something. The new enhanced input system gives us way more flexibility than the old one. So we're not just stuck with rigid controls. It's like going from a flip phone to a smartphone. Same idea, but way more possibilities. And then the payoff. We wrote the code to link those input actions to our character class. And for the first time, our capsule moved. Of course, forward, backward, left, right, with both keyboard and the gamepad. It's not flashy yet, but it's huge. This is the moment Ludoria officially took its first steps. And yes, it's still a capsule, but hey, every great hero starts somewhere. Mario started as a few pixels and now he's got a movie deal. Though I won't discuss whether it was the best movie ever. This is only the beginning of Ludoria's journey. In the upcoming steps, we'll be adding more actions like turning, jumping, and we'll add a character mesh 
so we can proceed with animations. If you want to follow along and even use the code we are writing, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next steps. Comment, like, ring the bell, and share to support this channel. In the description below, you'll find a link to the entire tutorial as well as the specific lessons and videos that cover everything we talk about in this devlog. Finally, make sure to check out Woolen.com to discover how you can transform your career and break into the video game industry. Follow my lead inside the Game Creator Accelerator, a proven methodology designed to help you build games, expand your network, and create real opportunities for you and your family. As always, keep creating, keep sharing, and most importantly, keep dreaming big. I'll see you soon, my fellow creators. After that, we added a spring arm. Um. <laughs>